What's up, everybody? I want to welcome y'all back to the channel. Part three on the How To Tig Art series. We're going to be covering the good stuff. So, as you'll see here, let's roll right into it. I'm getting everything tacked down. I'm running my corners first. I get everything fused. And then I'm coming in, I'm tacking the corners, and then I'm going to fall in in between. My rule of thumb on doing that is getting, you want to have at least 50% of your material stitch welded down to your art piece. That way you can minimize warpage and running into problems later on. Now we're starting on the piece. You'll see my rule of thumb is I always start from the inside out. One, I want to see where my flow is that I want to see where my amperage is at that way I can see what my oxidation or coloration is so I start from the inside out and with this being a mirrored piece it's actually pretty easy because I'm able to go from one end to the other and kind of dictate my color that way my color is looking good it's gold that tells me that my settings are right, my amperage is right, and the material is not too hot. Now, the reason I go from the inside out, okay, is so I can better manipulate the heat as the piece starts to heat up. I can see what's going on because your heat, if you start from the inside and work out, your heat is naturally going to dissipate out. So it allows you to move with your heat and adjust accordingly to get the color that you want. So what I'm doing here is I'm just basically taking the mirror image of each other and I'm looking at what needs to be welded before I make another weld so that my overlapping weld isn't out of sync if that makes sense that's the part of detailing and layering on an art piece that is so critical so you don't want to make a weld prior to making a weld that is going to be overlapping that so if you i'm trying to figure out the best way to explain this but you want to look at it as layering the image to where it looks like it's one when it's done you don't want to see any starts and stops so I'm, I'm assuming if you're joining me on this TIG art venture, then you do have a welding background. And if you do, you know that there's always ways to plan what you're doing ahead to hide your starts and stops, to make everything look seamless. That's the same thing we're doing here, just on a broader spectrum. So every single pass is layer upon layer to build to the final piece. Because to me, that is the biggest difference in a good art piece and a great art piece. So that's constantly what I'm doing. That's, that's where my mind is at when I'm doing this. You'll see I'm still working from the inside out. I'm slowly working my way out. And you want to pay attention to your color. Okay, so rule of thumb. An order of color on stainless will tell you roughly where your heat input is at and where your material workpiece is at as far as the heat. Gold, straw colored, that's as cool as it's going to be. Silver, right in there in that category. And then from there, you know, you're going to start getting your blues and purples. I'll take purple before blue. The darker the color, the less heat is present. Once your purple and your blue start getting lighter and you start getting really faint colors, you're about to lose all of the color that you've got. So that's something to keep in mind. So I start out with the biggest cup I can get. I usually start out with the edge um, 18 and I run the smallest weld on the interior of the project that I can to tell me what's going on. 
where my settings are at, if my gas is too high. So, for example, and I'm just speaking freely about how I do this as you're watching this piece get done. Um, but for example, let's say I start out on that, you know, inner piece and it's silver. That tells me I have way too much flow rate, your CFH. You need to turn that down. Um, I should have covered it already, but I didn't. I'm running on 20 gauge stainless. That is about the thickness of a razor blade. And I have my machine set at 40 amps. There will be times when I'm only using 10% of that pedal, but I want it when I need it. My flow rate to start is always set at 30 CFH. Now, when you're running a bigger cup, you're always going to need more flow rate to take up the volume of that cup. As you go down, so let's say you, if you're using edge cups, as you go down, if you go from an 18 to a 15 to a 12 to a 10, you might need to start, you know, tapering off on your flow rate, turning your regulator down. And all that comes by paying attention to your color. So remember, and always keep in mind, silver, gold, straw colored, not much heat input, and plenty of gas coverage. Blue, purple, the darker, you're starting to get some heat input, and your um, flow rate or your gas coverage is sufficient, but it's not enough to prevent oxidation or your coloring from occurring. Now, as those colors get lighter, you're getting very hot and you don't have enough gas coverage. And then from there, you're gonna lose all coloration and it's gonna turn into something that you don't wanna see on your art piece. So I can only tell you, you know, so many tips and tricks and things to look out for. Everything else is gonna come from hood time and, you know, being under the hood and actually performing the work. And the biggest advice I can give you is when you are doing it, you know, you can, you could practice a thousand hours and not get any better. You have to practice and pay attention to the details. When something changes, when something doesn't go right, when it doesn't work out the way that you think it's going to, you need to stop and take the time to look at it and see why, what's causing that. I do that to this day and I figured it up. I've got over 20,000 hours of experience under the hood running TIG. And I'm constantly questioning, why is this? Why is that? That's the only way we get better. And honestly, the day I can stop improving, I'll put my hood up and I won't do it anymore. That's the biggest challenge I love about it. And I hope this is helping y'all. I mean, you know, the... Um, the biggest advice that I can give you is to try it out yourself, take these steps and then apply it and make your own adjustments and make a routine that fits for you. And then once you figure out a routine that works, stick with it on every piece that you do while still paying attention to the small details. And that is where you improve. So with that being said, I hope it all helps. Um, and I'm going to roll into a time lapse with some audio and I'll be back at the end. Stay tuned.
What is this? Take 52? Okay. Oh, to be eligible, comment, like, subscribe. I'm actually going to take every single entry or comment, rather, in every video of this series. So the more you comment, the more entries you get. And if you haven't already, check out the link in the description. It'll tell you about my Instagram and you can see my daily post on there. Until then,